Hi again, this is Lily De Leon, and today we're going to talk about the basic stitches of crochet. Before we do that, let me give you some information on how a pattern or how the instructions look like in a crochet project. Some instructions are written, like for example, it's like a narrative, like do chain 10 and then uh, join to form a ring, put double crochet into the ring, something like that. So I'll show you when it's written and when it is done in symbols, like it's charted, like there's a chart that you follow. Uh, this is an example of a written pattern. This book is about the different sacks. So all the instructions are written. So round one, round two, row one, row two, and sometimes you're given a picture. So this is how a written instruction crochet, uh, crochet project looks like. Some come in uh, just uh, the chart and symbols, they use symbols. Uh, this is a charted uh, pattern. So no, no words, just a picture and symbols and they tell you how many stitches you do, how many chain, how many double crochet and where to put it. So this is a charted uh, uh, pattern instruction. And the later, later the books now come in both. There are some books that come in both. You have the picture and then you have um, the written and um, so the written and the, uh, what you call this, the charted uh, instruction with the different symbols and how many stitches on each. So uh, some, some of those who crochet uh, do not know how to follow the written instruction. They only know the chart and some they only know the uh, you know, vice versa. So, it's good to know both because uh, you cannot tell what kind of instruction you will get when you see, when you want a design. Especially now that there are so many nice patterns uh, in the, on the internet. So, that's how they come. They come in written instruction or in symbols. Uh, also, I will tell you how to hold a crochet hook. There are two ways to hold a crochet hook. Crochet hook. This is called the pencil method. This is like you're holding a pencil or a pen. So this is the pencil method. This is how you hold your, your hook using the pencil method. And usually there is this flat surface where your thumb is resting. Okay. And this is the way to hold it like a knife. You're holding a knife. So this is the knife method of holding a crochet hook. Uh, seldom do we see here using this knife method. The first time I saw this done, used by a student, is when I had a student from Chile. So she, learned, she wants to learn how to read instructions because she knows already how to crochet. So I told her, show me how you watch you know, how far you learn, what do you learn from crochet. So she started holding her crochet hook like this and started doing it. And to me, it, I found it uh, quite uh, funny because I never, I've never seen somebody using it. And then later on, while I was doing so many crochets, when I had uh, to do like uh, a big afghan and I had to use the thick yarn, it helps if you use this because there, there is not much pressure on your wrist because it's quite heavy and the, the yarns are big. So when I used this method, it was kind of easy. And now I realized this she came from, you know, with a country with winter and so they are used to using thick yarns. But us, we were, we were only doing the, the, the cotton and we were using the, the finer hook. So it was very convenient to do it this way. So that's when I learned that you can hold your hook um, differently, either with a pencil method or the knife method. It's just like, I remember uh, an instance when I have a friend, she's an American, and we used to deal with some fabrics. And when she would uh, take the yardage of a fabric, 
she would do like this. If, uh, let's pretend that this is a fabric. So to take a yard, you would usually like this. One stretch arm up to the shoulder. So to do like that. So one stretch arm up to the shoulder. But when she does it like this, she, was, she would stop on her nose. And I find it funny again. So I told her, why do you do that? Why? And then it came to me that her arms are longer than mine because she's, she's so tall, she's an American, and so she has to stop here on her nose. So, so many uh, ways you learn. I learned from you know, some of the many years I've been teaching people. So let's go to the basic crochet. I will demonstrate to you the different stitches on crochet, just the basic ones. The, the others like the popcorn, the shell, and the, we can do it while we're doing a project. It's, it's, uh, sometimes it's not important to do so many stitches when you will not, be, you will not use it for a specific project. So uh, my students in my store, and I was, uh, every time they come across a different stitch, they would come to me and then I can teach them the other stitches. But now, for now, we will do the basic. And I'm sure you'll find in YouTube or in the internet more uh, instructions on other um, special stitches. But today we're going to teach you the very basic stitches of crochet. Okay, before we start our basic uh, crochet stitches, there is one important thing I want to share with you. Um, you have to make sure that you are using either a U.S. pattern or a British pattern. Like the one that I'll show you now will be the in US, in US term. Because a single crochet in the US pattern is equivalent to a double crochet, double crochet in the British. It's entirely different. Uh, the half double crochet, the, the double crochet is a treble. So it's one step higher, the British. So if you're working on a British term, a British pattern, and then you are doing the CUS, uh, there will be a big uh, difference in your project. So this is uh, from this uh, book that I have. Uh, I have this in knitting, I have this in weaving, so many, and embroidery, so many things. A Crochetier's Companion by Interweave. Interweave, and uh, this is by Nancy Brown. So it's very important that you know that. Okay, so let's start uh, showing you the basic stitches on crochet. 